Welcome back to another Post Media Senators panel. I'm Bruce Garriock with Wayne Scanlon, a contributor for Sportsnet.ca and a longtime columnist here at the Ottawa Citizen. Wayne, the Senators coming off a two-game road trip and opening a three-game homestand against the Nashville Predators Thursday night, uh, heading into the Christmas break, coming off what you would call a gutsy loss to the Tampa Bay <laughs> Lightning. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. That's one of the craziest games I've ever seen, Bruce. I mean, every time it looked like Tampa Bay might run them out of the rink. They had periods where they were absolutely dominant. Uh, Hogberg would make a save or, you know, the puck would go up ice and, and Ottawa would get back in the game. So they pushed it to overtime, uh, lost in overtime, had a chance on a, on a Pajot breakaway. So they, they could have come away winners, but uh, they get one point out of those two games in Florida. Well, and I look at the situation this way, and let's talk, let's start with the goaltending. Marcus Hogberg is still looking for his first NHL win. I thought he played well in that game. This is the guy who's going to be the backup next year by, by all accounts. Uh, I think he's been impressive in the opportunities he's got. He has. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of unfair, really, that he hasn't got a win yet. Um, how about the look on his father's face when that overtime goal went in? <laughs> this is, of course, the father's trip in Florida, and uh, Mr. Holberg looked uh, quite disconsolate when that puck went in. Uh, yeah, not for his uh, lack of effort. At times, I thought he looked a, a little bit awkward, uh, maybe a little bit out of position. Uh, he's not a, uh, an astute puck handler by any means. But, but he's a big body, and, uh, you know, he's played fairly well in um, Belleville this year, and I, I think there's potential there. It's nice that he's getting this little bit of a tryout um, with Craig Anderson injured. Well, and I think we've gotten caught up in this, in this, uh, on this panel a few times. We seem to want to anoint Anders Nielsen as the number one goalie and say that he's the be-all and the end-all here, and Craig Anderson comes back and plays strong. I don't know what you've thought about Anders Nielsen this season, Wayne, but I don't believe there's been any in-between with this guy. He's either been very good or he's been very bad. And we saw a very bad Anders Nielsen in Florida on Monday night. Yeah, we did. They lost 6-1. to one, uh, He was full value for the, <laughs> for the loss. Uh, you know, overall, his numbers are pretty good. I mean, his numbers are, are better than Craig Anderson's, but I, I agree with you. When he's bad, he's, he's awful, and when he's, when he's really strong, it's almost like you can tell early in the game. Yeah, you know, Nilsson, yeah. Nilsson's on tonight, and, and look out. But, you know, that's, that's the way it's going to be. Um, I don't know who else. Anderson, you know, when he comes back, is, he's, I, I, to me, Anderson's been better lately. Like, yeah. I, I didn't think he got off to the greatest start this season, but he's been better. Now he's hurt. So it'll be nice to get him back, but you'd have to think if he's healthy, he's a guy that's going to get moved at the deadline. Well, one of the things, one, and, but that's an injury situation too. If there's a team that, that has an injury, I think they'll, they'll make a run for Craig Anderson. But one of the things I think we have to talk about, because he's been their, by far their best and mo most consistent player is the Anthony Duclair. You know, when they got him from the Columbus Blue Jackets, I'm not going to say he was a throw-in in the trade because I, I think the Senators wanted to have a look at him. They wanted to take him for a test drive. Uh, they had no expectations. Here he is at midseason with almost, or heading into midseason with almost 20 goals. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, to me, he's been the, the best performer of all the guys that uh, Pierre Dorian picked up last year when he dealt all those bodies. And, you know, Brandstrom's going to be a great player, and Dillo DeMello's been tremendous on the blue line. But who expected this from Anthony DeClaire? It's a, it's a great, great story. You know, we, we think in Ottawa that we're, we're close to the team and, maybe too close when we write about these players that are blossoming, he's become a national story. I mean, people are talking about him as one of the really great stories in the NHL when you think this is, what, his fifth NHL team. Uh, Tortorella basically tore a strip off him last year saying that he does whatever he wants out there and, he, you know, you can't rein him in. It's, it's a great story. Well, I was going to just to interject here a little bit, do you think that maybe the best thing that happened to him was, was what John Tortorella said? And, and perhaps when he got moved to another team, and, and he's still very young with a lot of potential, do you think that, that perhaps, Wayne, that served as a wake-up call? Absolutely. To Anthony Absolutely. And, and you know what? He came here and he started producing right away. What do you have? Yeah. Eight goals, I think, uh, yep. after the deadline last year. And he's just picked up where he left off. And it's you know, it's a two-way street because you've got D.J. Smith that's given this guy uh, opportunity, and, and I think it's uh, Capuano, Jack Capuano, who actually thought of the idea of using him on the penalty kill. Yeah. But, you know, there, his speed, is it's effective both 
uh, in five on five play, uh, his shot on the power play, and then using his speed when he's shorthanded. And last night you saw you saw a five on five goal uh, that was his 19th of the season and tied the game, forced overtime. Uh, he's money. He, he gets in alone. Uh, he just doesn't miss. One guy who I think has really also picked up his play in the lately is is uh, Thomas Shabbat. Um, I know maybe he doesn't have the offensive numbers that people want him to have, but 37 minutes against Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, and I think he's really started to lead the way here. I was looking at him in, uh, in overtime. He had the puck behind the net, and I thought, I think he's too tired to skate up ice. <laughs> he's been out there almost 38 minutes. But he just looked so calm and cool last night. I just I love the way when he wheels with the puck, it just feel, you feel like there's no chance he's going to get stripped of the puck. And... Um, He's really come into his own, but I feel bad for him because of the situation with, with Zaitsev and DeMello out. They basically were running a couple of American Hockey League defensemen out there. They didn't play all that much, and that meant uh, a guy like Shabbat had to, had to take on all those extra minutes. So I think it's a temporary situation. He won't have to do that for long, but uh, he's gotten better as this season has progressed. I think early on he was trying to live up to his new contract. One of the situations that, that obviously is going to have to be addressed is the defense. Um, I, I do think that they are looking for a defenseman, uh, it, it, either on the trade market, because I think they're pretty much tapped out as far as healthy bodies in, in Belleville as well. Um, do, do you see a situation, if they were going to get a defenseman, what kind of defenseman would you like them to get at this point? I, I think, you know, I, I doubt they're going to get somebody that's going to be a, a, a big part of their top four in the next 10 years, that kind of thing. You know, they've, they've got some young talent with their five draft picks in the first two rounds and potential to pick up more draft picks. I can see them drafting uh, some big uh, mobile defensemen. So I think it's almost someone just to plug the gap, Bruce, to, to get them over the hump and give DJ Smith some, some NHL defensemen to run out there. And my guess would be in that situation, you don't want to give up too much, right? Yes, they have all these draft picks. And yes, they can use those to get assets, but you want to be careful in that front as well, right? Absolutely. I, I look at the other situation here, heading into the Christmas break, uh, then, then comes the World Juniors. The Senators heading into the Christmas break, have they, have they performed above your expectations or have they performed the way you expected? I think the way we expected. You know, it seems like it's one, one step forward and one back. It's... It's a rebuilding team. They have nights where they, I mean, the effort is always there. They tend to keep games close, and the, the, the blowout, like in Florida, has been rare. So I think, uh, you know, all in all, uh, they're on the right course to, to get a good draft pick next year. Well, this was a strong effort from you for the Post Media Senators panel. For Post Media, have a safe and, safe and happy holiday season. I'm Bruce Garriock with Wayne Scanlon of Sportsnet.ca.